The job you really came to do was win the Caltex Championship for Newcastle. Have you got them as ready as they were for Parramatta, do you think? They're pretty revved up uh, at the moment. There's, um, like, you know, providing the referee keeps them apart, like, you know, we could play a pretty good game. If it becomes, you know, if, if he lets the five-yard rule uh, get uh, abused, then it might come a little bit of a slaughterhouse, you know, somewhere. You just, you know, it becomes a little bit of a brutal game instead of, a, you know, an open game, sure. which I'd like to have. What do you know of Riverina? Nothing, so that's, that's why I can't predict too much. Is that an advantage or a disadvantage to not know anything well, as a coach? Sometimes it's an advantage to know. When, when you're playing in Sydney, you, you get to know the teams and their styles, but uh, with a country, you don't know. It's, it's, like a, it's like a lottery. Yeah. With the Newcastle side, Mick, do you see that you've got several players that are trump cards, as Sydney clubs do have, obviously, some very good players that stand out? Have you got that sort of thing in Newcastle, you think? I, I think the, the, the individual guy up here is, uh, is a lot mentally tougher, you know, in, in different aspects. He, he, a lot of them endure pain and that's what the game's all about and um, probably there's a few of them around. You know, it's a bit hard to mention each individual guy but, you know, it's a bit of a Spartan game and it's a Coliseum where we play it. I heard you say the other night at training that concussion's the name of the game. That sort of spelled out to me that rugby league you believe is a game for courageous people. Well it is. They're trying to make it Pretty, you know, the whole game has, has gone away from what it was in, you know, meant to be. Like a lot of people are trying to make the game into a, into a, a just an ordinary type of game of touch football. Like, you know, the game was meant to, to use brute force and a lot of people are trying to take that out of the game. You know, we've got to install it back in there to get the crowds back. Do you get the feeling you can beat this mob on Saturday? Well, we'll be putting it right into them. Imported in constructing the new plant. None of the plant uh, was imported. Uh, the only things that we purchased from overseas was the manufacturing technology. Uh, all of the fabrication work was done here by local industries, uh, with some of the uh, heat treatment furnace work being done by uh, people from the Sydney area. Thanks Mike, well events still going on here at the Newcastle Lease Club and the championships are well underway. We've just seen a performance by Cathy Aspie who was the 1983 Australasian Women's Champion. She came out and did a special posing routine. We've seen the Masters event, that's the over 40 years of age guys. And a lot of those guys looking fairly well for their age too. And also the first of the Men's Opens event and that's the under 70 kilos class. We've still got the 70 to 80 kilos class to go and the over, the over 80 kilos which is the heavyweights. And it looks like an exciting afternoon of bodybuilding. These guys have been training for some months now in preparation for this event. And for the last five or six weeks, most of them have been on a special diet just to lose some of the excess weight and to get some of the definition back into their muscles. Looks like a great afternoon. Back later on with another report.
Thanks, Mike. Well, we're back again. And bodybuilding may not be everybody's cup of tea, but it's certainly proving very popular around here at the moment. We've got over 700 people here, I believe, this afternoon, and the money raised, of course, goes to the NBN Telethon in aid of the cancer appeal. Now, there's plenty of action happening. We've got all sorts of divisions. We've got uh, couples coming up later in the afternoon. We may not get to see those. They may be a little bit too late for us. But just now, have a sit back, take a look at some of the exciting vision that we've got for you from the Newcastle Lease Club. Before the rising breeze swept the paddocks clean of any game sent, members of the Hunter Valley Hunt were at Hungerford Hill for an early start to the first hunt of the season. Organised by a small band of dedicated enthusiasts, the Hunt endeavours to keep alive, down under, all the traditions of this English sport. Before the off, Hunt chairman Dr Colin Suching reminded riders of the proper form. Above all, give the hounds right of way. But at the off, some hounds did have a little trouble with the first fence, as did some of the riders. Through the season, the hunt rides twice a week. Sometimes they have caught and killed foxes, but hares are more common game, and usually they're wily enough to get away. Further up the valley, Denman was celebrating 100 years of public education in the area. The highlight of a weekend of events being today's procession down the main street. The impressive turnout was a great demonstration of just what a small community can achieve when it sets its mind to it. The committee has been working towards this weekend for 18 months and their efforts made today an exciting one for Denman. Many of those watching were former pupils of schools in the Denman area who had returned for the centenary celebration. Throughout Denman this weekend, many long forgotten memories have been revived and old acquaintances renewed. Just 15 minutes away from Denman at Singleton, some 500 people were preparing for a run, but no ordinary run. And it was a run which started with a bang, a couple of kilograms of high explosive replacing the normal starter's pistol. The event was a 10 kilometre cross-country run around Singleton Army Range, and the testing course soon had some surprises in store. Club, the event went with military precision. Competitors' progress along the course being monitored by radio. Although the serious runners soon drew clear of the main bunch, there was an incentive for everyone to keep going. All finishers under an hour and a half went in a draw for a surface paradise holiday. Back with the serious runners, the state 1500 metre champion David Forbes was going like a train. And just 33 minutes and 8 seconds after the start, Forbes crossed the line ahead of Horst Wegner of Liverpool and Mike Beastie of Newcastle. Very tough actually. <laughs> Tougher than you thought? Uh, a few surprises there? Oh yeah, harder than the normal fun run course. Yeah. You give a few people behind a bit of trouble I think. Maybe a long way outside their personal best. more. The Mayor, uh, Alderman Jeff we Pasterfield, says he'll not stand for it anymore. Each year, vandalism costs the council uh, a considerable uh, amount of money, which uh, otherwise could be spent on providing facilities for the public. At tonight's Jeff, council meeting, Alderman will consider new country. moves which have yes, not yet uh, been disclosed. Robin, I am concerned because uh, I believe that the community could have very much more uh, if we were able to 
get people to realise that um, each time that they vandalise something, it's something else that the community goes without. Does it cost council quite a lot? I would think uh, without having uh, got an actual cost out on it, it still would be quite costly in this municipality. How do you plan to arrest this problem? Well, uh, we're not disclosing fully our approach to it at this stage, but uh, uh, the very small element which I believe is involved in vandalism in the municipality is in for a shock. What I'd be putting to Cabinet when the time arises is a package of proposals that will entail an agreement by the unions, the seagoing unions concerned, to increase productivity and to increase shipboard efficiency, an agreement by the Commission itself to improve its management efficiencies and to initiate steps to reintroduce the vessel, the Australian Enterprise, back into the international trade. And the third strand is an agreement by our government to put the line on a sounder commercial footing so that it'll have a, it won't suffer from a chronic undercapitalisation, it won't have the same heavy interest bills and overall the package will put the line on a sound basis, provide a basis for future growth and security and for greater share of trade in international shipping. That, does that mean financial aid for a &L? No, it means if the proposal comes together and the package is acceptable and supported by all of the three parties, then it means a capital injection into the line. The meeting was called to resolve once and for all the direction to be taken on the development of the Waratah estate. The recommendation made by the town clerk was that Kearns no longer be involved and the council develop the Waratah estate through a project manager. It was an important vote for Kearns, which has committed money and time to the project since 1981. In a bid to save its interests, two of Kearns' top representatives, including Mr Barry Paul from Queensland, attended the meeting. Mr Paul was given the opportunity to put his case forward. He stressed that Kearns had not withdrawn its original offer to purchase the site for $7 million, but he said his company wanted a bit of breathing room to meet the payment. My Lord Mayor, the point of negotiations has always been how can we soften the effect of the balance of the purchase price of $7 million after paying the first $3 million so that there is a position where we don't get caught on the Waratah estate and not being able to develop and sell the land and basically we ask for an extension of time in which to make that payment. Soon after Mr Paul's address, the meeting was adjourned for private discussions. We'll not know until next Tuesday's scheduled council meeting whether or not Kern's last-minute appeal was successful. One wonders why direct negotiations with the company were left up until last night when the council meeting had to be put aside for discussions with Kearns.
The suggestion that Bayswater will mean the closure of some older power stations was made today by a spokesperson for the State Energy Minister, Terry Sheehan. Last year, the Electricity Commission decided to defer the construction of the third and fourth units because of a major drop in power usage. Therefore, the stepped-up construction means the Commission will have excess power generating capacity. As well, Bayswater is a threat to older plants such as Wanji and Munmora because it produces its power much more efficiently. The spokesperson for Mr Sheehan said the closure of such power stations will save money and Bayswater can replace them cheaply. The decision to return Bayswater to its original construction schedule is also a cost saving. Investigations found the program of deferred construction would cost millions more than the original. This is because of penalty clauses contractors would invoke due to their lost income. The Bayswater speed up will create new jobs at the site. Terry Maudsley of the BWIU says employment will peak at 2,000 in the next few months, up from the 1,200 now at the site. However, no one can say what the employment consequences would be if other power stations close. The staff at Cardiff Workers Club and the Cardiff Lions Club have worked throughout the year to raise the $9,000 needed for the new operating head. And today the cheque was handed over to the chairman of the board at Walls End Hospital, Mr Bevan. The club staff from Cardiff raised the money by holding a variety concert last year, while the Lions described the fundraising as their major project for the year, in keeping with their journey through SART campaign. The head, which is a microscope specifically used for eye surgery, is the first of its kind at Walls End Hospital and will help patients with cataracts and other eye trauma. Award last night on behalf of the Newcastle District Cricket Association. The trophy was the actual ball used by McCosker to score the first century in Sheffield Shield in Newcastle against England at the number one sports ground. Rick had a few good words to say about Newcastle season, cricketers. Um, they did a tremendous job. Uh, I hope that I don't see any reason why there won't be future Sheffield Shield games in Newcastle. The most outstanding club of the season was the University, which picked up five trophies, including the major prize, the first grade shield. The player of the year was Gary Gilmore. hydraulic lifting device. According to the Fire Brigade's Regional Training Officer, Mr Ern Hillard, the equipment will be used at accident scenes. Mr Hillard did point out, however, that the firemen won't be taking work away from police or ambulance rescuers. Should they be called to any accident, they will be able to proceed straight away with not only extinguishing the fire, but they will be able to extricate the person's trapped straight away. We already have police rescue and ambulance rescue here in Newcastle. Is there any need, do you think, for, for the firemen to have similar equipment to those? Yes, we will be a support unit. We're not uh, taking over rescue by any means, we're just a support unit. And particularly in the country where there is no police rescue or ambulance rescue, the fire brigades have a appliance in almost every major town in New South Wales, so therefore there'll be rescue gear on those appliances ready to do the job.
instead of waiting on a police vehicle which may have to go from Newcastle to Murrundi for instance. We've taken the vehicle. Eighteen-year-old Lynn Essex spent the weekend in the car park of the Edgeworth Oasis sitting on a small platform at the top of a 13-metre pole. Although it was an activity not well suited to the weekend's rainy weather, Lynn didn't seem to mind. It was all in the aid of charity. Lynn began her 48-hour pole sit on Friday evening and immediately set to work raising funds for the Australian Kidney Foundation. Her platform was equipped with a telephone which she used to ring around asking for donations. Lynn expects her pole sit will raise at least $2,000 for the Kidney Foundation.